Hey friends, let's talk about the very exciting topic logging today. I know that logging is a topic or a feature or an implementation you just have to do, at least for many of you it is, for me it definitely is, but there is one solution, you probably already heard of it, that makes logging really easy and maybe also a bit fun and that's Serilog. So I want to show you an introduction of Serilog, how easy it is to use this library for your logging, no matter if you want to log into the console or to a file or if you want to use Azure even for that stuff. And I'm pretty sure you can do this in only a couple of minutes. So without further ado, if you like this video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button, maybe even subscribe to my channel. It does make a difference. Thank you very much for that. And if you want to get more tutorials like this one into your inbox, then maybe you want to check out my newsletter. Thank you very much for considering. And now let's start with the tutorial. So the first thing you need to make Serilog work is a NuGet package. And the way Serilog does work is you can choose to either get this package here, simply called Serilog. And then when you want to, for instance, log your stuff into a file. So store your logs into a file on your hard disk, for instance, or into a console, then you already see that Serilog organizes that stuff into so-called syncs, right? So a file is one sync, a console is another sync. So this is where all your stuff, all the lines you want to write are landing in essence and where you can put all that stuff. But that said, you can install Serilog and then the additional uh, packages for file and console if you want to log your stuff into that thing. But I've got a web API here, an example project, typical, really the default template for a web API, a .NET Core web API, .NET 7 in this case. And if you're choosing to do something with a web application, then you can also, or if you're doing something with ASP.NET Core in essence, you can also just grab this package here and you've got everything covered. So Serilog ASP.NET Core, perfect. If you wanna use Serilog for your logging in a web API project, for instance, and this is why I am choosing, choosing this package here. So we install that and then great stuff is you can already go for instance to your weather forecast controller and let's say we just want to uh, log here the the result of this uh, function here right or of this endpoint so what we can do is first say our results is this stuff actually and down here we want to return this then so return the results all right and then here we can enter lock almost lock all right visual studio control period and then we see the namespace already for serilog so we add the reference here and if visual studio wants to it added the namespace the reference perfect and then we can already say okay i want to lock something with the information level or the error level or debug whatever you want to do you can already do that here and let's say i want to lock whether forecasts in this example is the following, then I can do that, right? And now maybe you're asking if you don't know that already. Wait a minute, result is a list. Does this really work that it is displaying the complete list? Not yet, but what Serilog does or what it has is a great feature and that's the so-called destructuring. So it really destructured, destructures any object you want, like the development tools in Chrome or Firefox, for instance, do it uh, when you just use console log in JavaScript and then you put an object there, then you see the complete Java, uh, the J complete JSON object, I mean, and what you can do is you simply add this at sign here in curly braces, the, the argument or the parameter, and then you also add see it here, the property values then, right? So the first thing it is, uh, this is the message template, and then you additionally add all the properties you wanna add there, the values. So in our case, that would be simply the result. Okay, when we do that, maybe you're already wondering, really, is this enough? Well, not really, there's one more thing we have to add, but I, let me just show you, I did nothing else. And now I want to have a look at the console here. 
And this then would be the, the web API example, right? We've got the weather forecast endpoint, you know this. We hit execute, and now we have a look at the console, nothing there. And why is that? Well, we have to configure Serilog, but please don't stop the video. It's really, really, really easy and fast. So what we now do is we go to the program CS. Remember, we've got the NuGet package. We've got one line to lock that stuff. Uh, the weather forecasts and now here in the program CS we add our configuration and we do that for instance right here so lock it is again using seri lock and then we say we uh, want to add a new logger configuration that's the one and there's a whole lot of stuff you can configure I really recommend uh, opening the the, the documentation if you want to know more for instance here just google for it and then you you come to the github pages this is how you install that stuff right and then here you also see uh, some configurations because this is pretty much the same thing that we will do in a sec but there's of course more as always so let me just continue here we want to uh, lock the for instance minimum level debug then, or we can also say information, for instance, right? Then the next part we want to do is we want to write this to the console. And then we can already say create logger. All right, so we remove this uh, semicolon here, of course. And now the error is gone. We save everything. Start the application one more time. Here's our console and here's that stuff. And now try this out, we hit execute. And what do we see? Wow, we see weather forecasts and then really all the forecasts here destructured in essence. Isn't that great? And that's already it. So this is how you can do it for your development case. For instance, you just wanna log your stuff into the console. But again, you can do more with that. For instance, lock everything into a file. And for that, we can simply say write to, and then I wanna write that into a file. And here I first enter the path. So where should this go? If you wanna do that, you're on Windows and put that into C and then a certain folder, then you would start with a slash and then logs, for instance, or if you want to use your application folder, then you just remove that forward slash, and then you add logs, and then for instance, my beautiful log dash, and why the dash? Because Serilog by default um, adds the current date then to the, to, the, to the name of the file if I also add this a little parameter here, the rolling interval, meaning, I can say I want to have a file for each day, hour, month, whatever. And that's that, right? And then the resulting file would look like that. I've got logs and then my beautiful log dash and then the current date. And the next day I get another log, right? So this is how this works. We just restart our application and let me open that real quick. Here's the development folder, let's say, and now I go back to the application, run this again, and now I've got my logs folder. Isn't that nice? With the log, we can open that and see it here. And now if you want, you can of course also open this with Visual Studio Code, for instance. And if you've got a code formatter installed like Prettier, we can also say, wait a sec, this is a JSON. And now we can also format this document with, let's say the JSON language features. And here I've got the objects, isn't that nice? And with that, if you wanna go more into the direction of structured logging, you can play around with that and say, well, all the logs look the, the same or the, the, the template or the structure, right? Of the logs is the same and then you can even have a look and compare the the objects here. Isn't that nice? So this is what you can do with Serilog, but there's one more thing I wanna show you because I, I already hear the questions. Well, this is hard coded into the program CS. What about 
different development stages. For instance, we've got, uh, we've got our app settings JSON file here, right? But we've also got an app settings development. Maybe you've got an app settings production, app settings test, whatever it is. I get it. You can also read the configs for Serilog from your app settings JSON file. And I'd say we do that real quick. So in a, instead of that stuff here, what you can then do is you say read from, almost read from, and then uh, configuration. And here we can add our builder configuration. And that's in essence, our app settings JSON file. I forgot one thing, create logger. All right. And now here, well, we have to type some stuff, but let me do this real quick. We can in essence, just remove this section here. And instead we add another one called Serilog. All right. And we open this thing here. Uh, let me just remove that stuff. All right. And here now we say we want to use certain sinks again, right? You remember from the beginning. So what we want to do is we want to write that into a console and into a file. And that's why we add here Serilog sinks console. And then pretty much the same thing for file logging. All right. So that's that. And then we have to configure, we can configure for each sync what we actually want to do. Well, the easiest one is the console sync because of this one. Again, we add an array here. Uh, well, this only gets a name. And that would be the console. But regarding the file, again, maybe you want to add the rolling interval and the path of my file, right? So in that case, we say, again, first the name, and that would be the file. And here now, we add some arguments. And again, I highly recommend going to the documentation for all the stuff you can configure here. The first thing in our case should be the, the logs. So Again, the logs folder, my crazy config log from the app settings, right? Dot txt. And again, the rolling interval would be day, all right? And that's really a tiny configuration. But this now should also work. So let me just restart this again. Got our folder here. But now let me open the web app. Try this out. No, let's let me hit execute a couple of times. And let me now go back. We've got the my crazy config log. Open that again, and you see here's also the data. Isn't that nice? And the last thing. The very last thing I want to show you, if you're wondering, well, it's nice that we can write only this little line here into uh, this function or the endpoint, the body of this, this function here. But what if I want to get an information every time a user is making a web service call? Do I have to write this line into every controller method or server method? Well, of course you don't. If you want to get the parameters, yes, then you maybe want to, but if you just want to get the information, hey, there was made a call and, and it took that long, then uh, you can do something else. And that would be using Serilog's request logging. So how does that look? Well, we just add one additional line here, builder hosts, and then use Serilog, all right. And then the first middleware I recommend you should add is app use Serilog request logging, all right. Let me just save that, restart the app one more time, and let me just remove all the locks here. Can't do that because it's open somewhere or it's already writing that. Oh, yeah, it is already writing something course, but let me let me just show you first the application. So here now, we hit execute. 
and then I open this again in Visual Studio Code. All right, and let me set this to JSON. So this looks a bit better, but you can already see here that something's happening, right? We've got the information logs and it says request starting. Well, this is the startup of the application really, but here now we see route matched with action get controller with a forecast. We see this is our log here, the, the data in essence. But uh, again, you get lots of other information if you use the request logging. For instance, the response times, 47 milliseconds. Let me try this one more time. We hit execute and you see something was added and now it was 26 milliseconds after warming up, right? And here the next one, 50 milliseconds, okay. 20 milliseconds, all right. So this is how this stuff works. I think that's awesome and this really is just surface level so you can do a lot more with Serilog but again just for this little introduction here I hope you learned something and you already think this is great Patrick I want to use this and I want to see more if you think that then please tell me that in the comments and I'm happy to create another video for you and apart from that I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button subscribe to my channel and maybe you want to watch the other videos here you see on the screen. So thank you very much for watching and I see you next time. Take care.